Tyson Jake Paul who you got Tyson yeah I think Tyson destroys him I cannot stand Jake Paul at all why Um, I I just I don't know I'm a big big Tyson guy I just Jake Paul rubs me the wrong way (laughs) Um, and I just feel like Tyson he's older but he's still got that power I feel like things become memory and so for him it's easy for him to jump back into it you know I'm wondering if it's going to be more dancing or if they're actually going to fight Wherever you guys are watching this show, I would truly appreciate it if you follow or subscribe. It helps a lot with the algorithm. It helps us get bigger and better guests, and it helps us grow the team. Truly means a lot. Thank you guys for supporting, and here's the episode. All right, guys, we got Jeffrey Mann here today, PR director for Chris Crone. Thanks for coming on, man. Well, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Chris has gone viral on the show, so. He has. It was, we've been out twice, I think, yeah. to film with you, and yeah. it's been great ever since. Yeah, it's been fun, man, getting to know you, and how'd you get involved with him? So a year ago, Chris and his team reached out to me. Um, they were looking for someone in PR. They interviewed agencies, like 25 different people, and they just didn't have a fit. And mm-hmm. so I interviewed with his team, went to one of his events, um, hit it off with his team, and by Monday they offered me, and I jumped on, and it's been going crazy ever since. Nice. Flying out every week, connecting with different people. Yeah, I want to talk about your cultural immersion. You've been to Africa. You've been everywhere. What are, what are some things that you've learned while traveling? So what's kind of cool for me is – Traveling the world, being to Africa, um, I'm African-American, I live in Utah, and so it's, I've met so many different people that now that when I travel, I can adapt to the rooms I find myself in, the people I connect with. It's just an, um, for me, it's an awesome experience because I feel like I have to be like a chameleon. Mm. I adapt whatever room I find myself in. Um, I like to work out, and so I want to look a certain way, so I stick out in those rooms as well. And so when I shake someone's hand, they can be like, hey, there's a little muscle there. And it just, <laughs> it automatically brings eyes to me. Yeah. You got that football muscle. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's good. Having that that confidence, right? From yeah. being muscular and like, it's a man, it's a manly thing. Yeah. Well, and you would know this. It doesn't work when you play basketball. I play every week and the more <laughs> you work out, the worse your basketball gets. That's the thing, dude. I had to cut back on lifting because of that. Yeah. Because when you, you're too muscular, it's like almost a hindrance in basketball because mm-hmm. you can't run as much. I, I think... And this is kind of crazy, but I think you should do a basketball game with all the guests you've had on your podcast. Dude, that's a great idea. Like a almost like celebrity all star yeah. game. I mean, there's been 600 guests, so I'd have to pick, but yeah, it'd be fun. You could find enough hoopers. Yeah, or just yeah. pick the worst ones so you can dominate. Yeah, I might do that. Billy Carson's having a game. Okay, coming up. I'm playing in that. Okay, I'm about to wreck that. When, <laughs> dude, Floyd doesn't invite me to his games anymore. Really? Dude, I, I just took off. I had 20 points. They had to double team me, and that's you got to go easy on these guys. I know, man. He's older, so he's not as good as he used to be. He can still box, though. That's true. You think you, he'll beat uh, Manny coming up? I think so. My thing is, it's going to be more dancing and more, I guess, show for fans, and it's a money maker. Yeah. I don't know if it's necessarily going to be a fight like the other ones were. Yeah. But I hope. I hope it's good. I hope so too. Tyson, Jake Paul, who you got? Tyson. Yeah. I think Tyson destroys him. He's almost I 60. cannot stand Jake Paul at all. Why? Um, I, I just I don't know. I'm a big big Tyson guy. I just, Jake Paul rubs me the wrong way. <laughs> um, and I just feel like Tyson, he's older, but he's still got that power. Um, I feel like things become memory. And so for him, it's easy for him to jump back into it. And, you know, I'm wondering if it's going to be more dancing or if they're actually going to fight. Mm. If Tyson can land one, it's it's Kale. It's over. Yeah. Once you have that power, I mean, I don't know if you ever lose it. Yeah, who are you going with? You're more of a boxing fan. I've actually never seen Tyson fight, to be honest. Okay. So I can't speak from just with my, my own eyes, but I want Jake to win. Okay. Are you going to the fight? Where is it? I think it's Dallas Cowboy Stadium. I might go. I've never been to a Jake Paul fight, but I'm down. You might as well. Yeah. Go do a podcast there. I know, right? Um, I want to talk about PR. What goes okay. into that? And are you more on the management side or are you on the outreach side? Like, where do you balance up? So I would say outreach side for me. Um, so there's two types of PR. You have the side that where they talk about, I'm going to put out press releases, I'm going to put out articles. I'm going to do all of that. They work with brands. Like I've worked with a company that did cell phone cases. Mm. Um, I've moved into PR for influencers and people because I've learned it's easier to sell a person and take a person to the world. Because I'll give you an example. With Chris Crone, I just have to put him in a room and he does the rest. Mm. He'll connect with people. He'll add value. He'll share insights. And, you know, my job is done. I just sit back and watch the magic happen. With brands, you really got to preach about, you know, here's the reason you should use it. You have to sell it. People sell themselves. And so I think people have, I guess, PR is a huge umbrella. And so what I would say is there's so many different facets. The big thing for PR now, is, and you can see this, is podcasts. Right. Podcasts is the new stage. 
because you can do it virtually, you can do it in person, but it's a short interview, a short time to connect, but you reach a ton of people. Mm. And so kind of what I've been doing is you take a podcast, it goes really well. The next step, you do a JV webinar together. Mm. Their audience loved you. They enjoyed it. Now you take that podcast audience, you do a webinar, you sell a product there, you make some on the front end, you make some on the back end, but it's a huge play. And so for me, the digital world has changed the way PR is, Yeah. even with um, AI. I mean, before I'd have to write up articles myself, everything, I can plug in the stats into AI and it writes the whole article for me. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, I agree with you on the podcast. I won't say any names, but there's people that go on these book tours, right? So they'll go on a bunch of podcasts. Some of these podcasts are bringing in $250,000 in yeah. sales to these books or these courses. And that's just one podcast. And then they go on like 10 to 50 podcasts yeah. within a month or two. Mm -hmm. So these guys are making millions yeah. off podcasts. And, it's, and it's, it's the new, I mean, it's so easy. I mean, the first time we did a podcast with you, we flew out from Utah, got here in the morning. We did five podcasts in one day, mm -hmm. did a lunch, did a dinner, flew back. I was in my own bed that same night. <laughs> and so podcasts are super easy to do. Um, and then you have somewhere, you know, are you interested in coming on the digital social hour podcast as a guest? We'll click the application link below in the description of this video. We are always looking for cool stories, cool entrepreneurs to talk to about business and life. Click the application link below. And here's the episode guys. They're either short or they're super long. I had, we did a virtual podcast out of Miami. It was three and a half hours. Damn. Um, but the cool thing about that is. That podcast, we had 900 leads come in. We did 100,000 in revenue just off that podcast. Wow. And so, you know, those three hours, it was long, but it was worth it. Yeah. And so my job is also to vet and make sure it's the right podcast right. for people to jump on. Yeah, I think if you have a great product or service and you can get on a big platform, it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I actually, cool. I've been working with my team um, probably in about a week or so. I'm actually going to be launching my own podcast. Nice. I, I was like, I meet enough people and traveling enough places, I'm like, I got to do something just to have conversations with people. Dude, absolutely. You travel every week, man. I uh -huh. mean, that's a no-brainer for you. Every time you pull up to a conference, you should line up four guests and yeah. film with them. Yeah, even it's, you know, I was like, 15, 20 minutes doesn't have to be long, but let's sit down, let's have a conversation. Now I have them in, you know, I have their contact in my cell phone, and I can talk with them. And then, you know, things organically may come from that. Right. I'm not doing the podcast to do businesses per se, but once you sit down and you have a great conversation and there's synergies, business can happen. Absolutely. So were you professional sports or what level did you get to with the football and rugby? So I played rugby up until I played it in college. Um, a few years ago, I got my 12th concussion. Damn. And I was like, okay, I'm either going to be brain dead. I got a twitch <laughs> in my hand. And so I had to stop because I just, you know, I was like, I need to go into a career, but I also need to be able to think. And so as much as I loved it, it put me through school. Um, it was my outlet. But I just, the body said no after, yeah. you know, after the 12th concussion. So my roommate in college had over 10 concussions and I could tell, but with you, I actually can't. So did you do some sort of healing afterwards? You know, I, I hide it. I, ibuprofen is my friend. Um, we got a debate on this. <laughs> yeah. I need to push back on that, but go ahead. So, um, that, and I've just learned to manage it. I still get the migraines. Um, a lot of the symptoms have died down. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's, it's what I live with now. Have you gotten a brain scan? I have not. I'm going to introduce you to Dr. Amen and Callie. Okay. He does brain scans for influencers and stuff. Okay. And he'll be able to heal your brain, dude. Okay. It's pretty Love impressive that. stuff. See, my only worry with that is what the brain scan reveals. Well, it's going to reveal what happened in the past. Yeah. Even soccer players have like parts of their brain. That's because true. Because they head the ball. That's you know? true. I did. A few years ago, I went to a doctor and he's, I had all this scar tissue in my neck. And he's like, were you in a car accident? What happened? And it was actually from playing rugby. Wow. And just the strain that it takes on the neck, it's the same as a head-on collision. Rugby's got to be one of the most dangerous sports in the world. Oh, it's it's insane. I mean, it's, everyone I know that played it has some nasty injury. Uh-huh. I, In fact, one of my teammates, I uh, we were in practice, and I tackled him once. We're doing a tackling drill, and if you missed the tackle, you had to go run a mile. And I was <laughs> I was done running, and I hit him, and I snapped his femur. Oh, my And his leg gosh. completely spun around. Um, oh. But it, it was just the name of the game. It was... Um, I didn't mean to do it, but it's just a physical, it's a violent sport. Yeah. And you get to take out all your aggression from the week on the weekend and you just get to hit whoever <sighs> is in front of you. Damn. Did you like rugby or football more? I like rugby more. Mm. I like rugby more. It's a different level than football because I'll give you an example. Once you play a rugby game, you can go out and you'd go and get drinks with the other team and hang out. There wasn't this whole division of, Hey, I'm this team. I'm that team. Um, 
it's more of a gentleman's game, yeah. I guess I could say. But also rugby, everyone gets to touch the ball. It's not like football where, you know, the quarterback, the receivers, the running backs get to touch it. Rugby, everyone can score. Mm. Um, and it's a longer game. There's no breaks. So it's, no timeouts? It's, there's no timeouts. Wow. It's 40-minute halves. It's mano y mano. And so, you know, you get to really see who's the best on the field. Damn, so you're really running 40 minutes straight? Yeah. That is crazy. Um, so there's no positions? So there's positions. So you have forwards and backs. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen a rugby game, but I've forwards is the group that come together in that scrum. Okay. And then the backs are the guys who are lined out wide. And the backs are usually the quicker, the faster ones. The forwards are the bigger guys. Um, it's, it's a beautiful game. Mm. Um, I used to come down to Vegas every year for the Las Vegas Sevens. Mm-hmm. They moved it to L.A. now. Um, but it was fun. It's That's a blast. Cool. How good is the U.S. in comparison to, in comparison to other countries? We're awful. <laughs> we are awful. You know, I said if we could take the NFL players and put a team together, we could give them a run for their money, but we're just, we don't play it as kids. And yeah. so the other countries are just so far ahead of us. But yeah, USA gets mm. destroyed every time. Plus the money's probably not there yet, right? Yeah. Yeah, some of these other sports. Like, Do you think pickleball is here to stay, honestly? I think so. It's crazy in Utah. Yeah? Everybody, all the even, even the churches have painted the gymnasiums to have pickleball courts. Mm. It's the new big thing. You have the pickleball centers going in. Um, I think it's here to stay. Wow. I thought it was a fad, but people are still playing it. Well, the thing is, it doesn't take much equipment, and you can play it in old age. And right. so it's a sport that everyone's picking up now. It's less wear and tear on the body. Mm. Um, I don't like it that much, but everyone plays it. And so, yeah, I played it a couple times. It's all right. I mean, you kind of need people around your level for it to be fun, I feel like. Yeah. So, no, 100%. I played tennis growing up, so I, I just was kind of naturally good. Okay. And ping pong. So, so I got to ask, what's your thoughts on ibuprofen? All right, so using it once in a while, completely fine. But the way you were talking about, are you using it every day? So I used to. So I lived when I lived in South Africa, um, when we would get injured or any they would say, just take ibuprofen. Yeah. They didn't give you how many you could take. You know, you could have 15 to 20. And they're like, Jesus. This will keep you going. And so that kind of got me. That was my, my crutch. Um, I've scaled back now because I've heard, you know, liver issues or different things. Yeah, that's my thing. I, I had a friend in high school kind of taking eight to ten a day or whatever, and she had some liver issues. So that's just my personal and so experience with I've, it. I've thought, you know, I use a lot of like CBD lotion yeah. and that stuff, trying to use that to help with the pain instead of the ibuprofen because um, I don't want to get addicted to pills or anything. Right. Um, but there's just, you know, trying to find the right way to manage pain. Yeah, I think it's tricky with the brain because you want to be as natural as possible. With something like the brain, that's definitely harder because mm-hmm. it's inside your body, right? Yeah. It's not something you could just rub a cream on. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Damn. Any skills you took from sports and applied to the business world? <laughs> you know, honestly, I think a lot of, um, I think almost everything, like working out, um, setting goals, being able to go into a gym, accomplish what I want to, sets the tone for the rest of my day. So I go to the gym in the morning. Mm-hmm. That's how I start every day. And then for me, if I don't, I feel like my day's off. Mm. But if I can wake up, get my body going, sweat a little bit, get my workout in, now I know the rest of the day is going to go, you know, somewhat according to plan. Days change and things get crazy, especially in PR. Um, PR never sleeps. But I have this rhythm and it's part of my morning routine that, hey, I start with the workout. Um, I think the other thing is when you, anyone who goes with me to the gym, I talk to everybody. Mm. But it's part of my job. My job is to connect and meet as many people as possible. And so I go to the gym. It's a chance to work out, but also to network. Right. Because there's other people in there. Then who knows who you meet in the room? I uh, I met a kid at the gym years ago, and we became friends. And we hung out, and I went to visit his family with him in Chicago. We get there, and he's like, hey, we're going to a Bulls game. So I'm just like, okay, it's cool. We get down there, and it turns out that his um, his uncle was like the VP of marketing for Chicago Bulls. So we went down to the court, and I was like, hey, I'm about to graduate in PR. I would love to come internship with the Bulls. And so the next summer I went out, interviewed with him at his office, got a tour of the locker room and everything. And it showed me that even at the gym, you could meet someone that could change your whole career. Mm. And so since then, you know, I, I never shut up. So I just decided I'm going to talk to everybody possible. Yeah. I love the lifetime here, man. I meet some really cool people in the sauna. I've met three podcast guests in the sauna. Okay. It's pretty crazy. What's what's that conversation like sitting in the sauna? Uh, it, it varies, man. It goes all the way from vaccine debates to who's winning the game tonight. Okay, you know, but it's uh, you never know where you're gonna get in the sauna. There's okay. like five to ten dudes, and you never know who you're gonna meet, dude. See, in Utah, when I sit in the sauna, I just like stare forward and don't talk to anybody. Really? Well, it's no, just, I'm trying it's to just, It's just the awkward. Well, it makes the time go by quicker because when true. you're in the sauna alone, I only last like 15, 20 minutes. But That's when true. I'm talking to people, I'll, I'll be in there 30, 40 minutes. 
Okay. Because I have this thing where I don't leave until I'm the only one left. Okay. I'm competitive in there. Okay. So we're like, gonna have to have a little sauna competition. Oh yeah, then. I'm down, bro. Okay. We'll, we'll go David Goggins. Did you see him and uh, Jesse Itzler in the sauna? Uh -uh. I think they lasted an hour, and then Jesse almost passed out. I go. I go an hour. Okay, let's try okay, it. Man. Okay. I'm down. Um, okay. But no, dude, I just went to this gym yesterday. Shout out to Sean Fritas. He owns this gym in Vegas it's called Project Well Wellness or something. Okay. Uh, six hundred dollars a month. Which people listening to this, they're, they're like, "What the hell? That's crazy!" But yeah. he caps it at three hundred members, so the networking's amazing. Okay, they have hyperbaric oxygen chambers, red light therapy beds, float tanks, uh, all this crazy equipment, saunas, infrared saunas, and uh, I might join just See, for the well, networking. That's the thing is, you look at the value, right? People are like, "I just want to go to the gym that you pay ten dollars a month," and I'm like, "You get what you pay for." A gym like that, recovery. Um, hydration is good for the body everything it's worth what you're paying if, if that's what you're trying to do right they do a blood test for everyone that signs up and then they cater workout plans based off your blood test oh, results nuts. it's nuts dude and then they measure results every 90 days and they have all this machine to track it i gotta check out this yeah gym. i'm gonna bring you by man okay. sick yeah and he caps it at 300 people all these professional athletes go there so you're getting to network with people so okay i think it's worth it okay i used to pay 20 a month for lvac and that <laughs> i mean I didn't meet anyone good there. It, exactly. <laughs> so, so I have a question for you. So, as a PR person, this kind of um, is interesting to me. What you've built up your podcast to where it is, tons of guests, amazing guests. Yeah. What what strategies have you done? Are you just doing organic? There's a mix. So the first thing I'd say the first the first are going to be the hardest because you don't have views, you don't have anything to kind of leverage. So you got to leverage personal relationships. Yeah. So have your friends on, people you know. And then from there, you're going to need some numbers to start getting the bigger guests. And you can also get a lot of guests from referrals of guests. That's true. So Chris has sent me people. Uh, what's his name? The Muscle. Keaton has sent me like 10 people. Yeah. He sent me Cody Sanchez, Ty Lopez, all those guys. Um, and then once you have the views, it's not that bad. You could just email, cold DM. So the first, I'd say first 25 to 50 will be hard. But you could go from there once you have some leverage. And do you, do you, are you doing it yourself? Or do, are you bringing a team in to do it for you? Now I have talent bookers. I used to do it myself. And I recommend everyone do it themselves yeah. so they can learn the ropes. Do that for as long as you can. And yeah, then but what, for you, probably don't have time now. Uh, I, I have time, but I like to focus it on the guests and yeah. doing preparation for the guests and all that. Okay. Yeah. But I'm excited for your show, man. I think you'll crush it. And Salt yeah. Lake doesn't really have that many shows. No. So no. You can really I, dominate out there. And my strategy, I'm going to take the show to people when I can. Because I'm like, if I'm traveling, I'm going to be in a city. I want to find someone in that city. I'm like, let's do a podcast. I'm here. Let's make it happen. Yeah. Yeah, I love that, dude. So when did you move to Salt Lake? So I've been in Utah for 12 years. So just a quick rundown. I was born in Maryland, adopted to Idaho, grew up in Idaho. When I was seven, we moved to Africa for the first time. My dad was doing humanitarian work. Uh, moved back to Idaho after two years. Um, and then my dad was called as a, a Mormon mission president, LDS mission president. We moved to South Africa for three years. And then back to Idaho, um, finished high school, um, graduated, moved to Utah, went to a semester of college. And then I went on an LDS mission myself um, back to Africa again um, for two more years and then been in Utah ever since. So 2014. Mm. And so I just call Utah home. I, as much as I love traveling and I've been able to travel the last year, I go to these amazing cities like Miami, Orlando, Nashville, um, and it's great to be there. But Utah is home. Well, it's nice to go back, sleep in my bed. Um, and just have that space to myself. I'm a fan of Utah, man. First time I went there, I didn't know what a Mormon person was, and it was just a big wake-up call for me. But yeah. it was cool. I yeah. like the culture out there. Now, keep in mind, Utah Mormons are different than Mormons in other states. Right. I, I always tell people there's it's just two different types. They're business-oriented out yeah. there, which I like. Yeah. You know, they business, grind. They don't drink. Uh-huh. They're lasered. They're focused. Yeah. No, it's a... it's For entrepreneurs, Utah is the state to be in. And it's, yeah. you have that, and then you have the whole summer sales door-to-door. Um, -door. It's huge in Utah. People going door to door. Yeah, so they most of the summer sales company like Vivint, um, Moxie, Aptiv, Proof Pest, the pest control companies, and the solar and um, security companies. Mm. Big in Utah. I didn't know that. Almost all the. If you want a free dinner, you go to the gym and be like, "Hey, I want to hear about going out with your team. <laughs> They'll take you to eat." That's hilarious. And that's in college. I used to go on dinner three times a week. Dude, and I'd I've, be like, hey, I'll go knock. Just take me to the... And you'd pick the nicest restaurant possible. Yeah. Go get some free food. And then I'm not really interested. <laughs> That's savage, dude. I've never been sold on a door-to-door. -door. Have you? No. I think it's a hard sale. No. No, I I just don't... 
I'm like, if I want something, I'm going to go find it myself. Yeah. Or I know somebody that I can call that can have that same service. For real. Yeah, cold calling doesn't work on me, man. I won't even answer if I don't know the number. Exactly. I'm a tough sell, I think. <laughs> but there's some Facebook ads that are really good. And I'll I'll, oh, yeah. I'll opt in the funnel just to see what they're selling. And What's that? I'd be buying clothes on uh, Instagram or TikTok. TikTok shop is yeah. good. I bought mm -hmm. a couple things off TikTok shop. Yeah, it's got. I'd be clicking on things and I'm like, do I need this? I <laughs> bought a cell phone case last week. I didn't need it. Yeah. But it looked cool. And I was like, let me just get it. Why not? Um, but yeah, it's it sucks you in. Yeah. You ever ever you ever have any aspirations to go out on your own, start your own business eventually? You know, I, I think that's the dream, right? Everyone has that dream. My thing is I love um, working with Chris has been amazing. I love working with him um, day to day, just connecting, talking with him. And so, you know, the dream is yes. But right now I'm in such a sweet spot and what I'm learning in a year, I've learned more than I, six years of college. Right. And so it's like, why, why would I throw that away or jump into something else? And so, you know, I have that dream and that vision in the future. But right now, I'm just focusing on kind of growing who I am, understanding, you know, what are my strengths, trying to connect with as many people as possible. Yeah. And then once I create that network, then we'll see what happens down the line. Absolutely. What are you guys currently working on right now? Um, so right now, we have some webinars coming up. We have some events that are happening. Um working on some wholesaling. Um, and so I'm just helping promote those. Um, and then the big thing is Chris has his new book, Time Machine, mm -hmm. that just came out. Um, we're doing a book signing tomorrow in Utah, actually. Nice. And then just pushing articles out about the book. Um, we're going to go to New York and go do a signing there, um, California. And so my focus really is pushing his book. This is the first book that Chris has done that has been just about brand awareness. Um, and so we're really pushing this out to podcasts, doing interviews on it, news mm -hmm. articles. Um, it's a big push. And so that's kind of taking up all my time. I love that. It's cool to see books coming back because yeah. I feel like they got lost for a bit, but now they're they're back. Well, and the cool thing is, so Chris is, um, and I'll send you it, his uh, audio book is all AI. Really? So he, he didn't set foot in the studio once. What? And it's all AI generated. So he didn't write the book? No, no, no. So he wrote the book, but instead of going and reading it and sitting for those hours, yeah. um, it was plugged into AI. It's Chris's voice. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just AI. Wow. I've actually seen videos of that. Yeah. And so it's cool. Um, I think it's really cool. I mean, it sounds just like him. And it's kind of scary. I mean, I could text you as Chris's voice <laughs> and have a conversation with you. Yeah. But it's but it's just me. That's scary. And dude. so, you know, it's, it's cool, but it's also nerve-wracking on, you know, how far does AI go? Are they going to regulate it? Because I'm like, you could take anyone's voice and plug it in. Um and start sending people messages. Yeah, I see fake videos of like Rogan's voice advertising like an ad or uh -huh. Huberman and stuff like that. And it just continues to grow. And I even saw, I went out to a founders board um, mastermind, um, Roland Frazier, um, and he was showing an AI video that he did mm -hmm. of his business partner. Wasn't him, business partner didn't do it, but they just plugged it into AI and he was able to have his business partner say, you know, all these sentences and stuff. And it was nuts to me. Yeah. Because I'm like, voice is one thing, but once you get video... And you can generate people. It's a whole different ball game. Yeah, dude. I was at Damon John's mastermind last week, and uh, Perry Belcher was showing an AI video, and th they're having AI call people now to buy their business, and people don't even know it's an AI robot. Yeah, it sounds just like a normal person. And when I, I, I think it's the future. It's pretty nuts, and they even prompt it where, like, if someone responds, it can talk to them too, which is nuts. I did. I saw a uh, TikTok. There's a female influencer who is all AI generated. She mm -hmm. doesn't even exist. But companies are, are hiring her because it's cheaper. She's perfect. The dimensions, whatever they want her to look like, they can make it happen. And so I'm like, is that the future of modeling and magazines and everything? Is mm. You just put an AI people out there. Yeah, I heard some actors are scared about that, actually. Because actors are super expensive if you want a good one. But now they're going to use AI actors. Yeah. Well, you can take Morgan Freeman's voice and use it in AI. Yeah, I wonder, because he's getting older, I wonder if he'll license his voice out when he passes away. See, that's what I, if I was an actor and I'm getting old, that's what they should all be doing. Yeah, because you it's leave it to your family. Just license it out, leave it to your family when they die. Their voice is still there. I mean, even you get the point where you could have the video is still there, mm. and they could use them, and then the family just gets the royalty. Right, because eventually they'll be able to recreate the person and just have them as a stunt double and with their voice. Mm -hmm. It's like they never even passed away, right? Mm -hmm. That is crazy. Yeah, that's nuts. Damn. AI is coming for us, yeah, man. Terminator out here. It is. Tell me about it. We'll see if it ends up being good or bad. I know. I don't know. Elon Musk seems pretty worried. Yeah. I, here's the thing. If it, The problem is you have something like AI, and if government gets their hand on it, they're going to regulate it to whatever benefits yeah. them. Their hands and are then, already on it. Yep, a... <laughs> and then, then it screws the average day person. Yeah. And so 
you know, it's a blessing and it's a curse. You know, I, I'm like, take advantage of it while we can before they change it and they move it to whatever they want, whatever agenda they have, and then we lose AI. Absolutely. Jeff, it's been fun, man. Anything you want to promote or close off with? Um, no. Hey, if anyone has any questions about um, PR or what we do, um, just follow me on Instagram. It's JeffreyMan underscore, and let's connect. Perfect. We'll link below. Thanks for coming awesome. on, Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for watching, Thank guys. You, big dog. See you next time. Hey, thank you.